Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. We are adding content to CheapControls.com so you can download some extra documents used in this video. In this video I'm going to go over pulse width modulation on the Arduino. We're going to hook up a potentiometer and have it brighten and dim an LED. We're also going to have an LED that's going to flash based upon the value of the potentiometer. Pulse width modulation is an interesting thing because it can make a digital output act as an analog or appear to be like an analog output. We're going to deal with two variables. I'm not going to put variables on the pins. Uh, we're just going to use pins 12 and 13 as outputs for the LEDs and analog pin 0 as an input for the potentiometer. Um, I need an one unsigned long end called current mil which is going to record milliseconds. I'll get into that later. And then we are going to have the potentiometer. I went ahead and assigned it a variable. And it's going to be equal to 0 to start with. But the first thing we'll do is read that value so it won't be 0 very long. Now for this video we really don't need a serial port. But I'm going to set one up so I can show you the values that we read from the analog port. And then as we convert them for the pulse width modulation. And as I said, we're going to use pins 12 and 13 for the uh, LEDs. Now the first thing we'll do is we're going to read the analog input of uh, pin 0 or analog 0, A0, and assign it to the variable pot. Now this value comes in as a value from 0 to 1024. It takes that 5 volt reading and breaks it down into a more granular level. But the Arduino's pulse width modulation requires a value of 0 to 100. So we're going to convert that value using a map function. The other thing that seems a little strange is we're going to analog write to a digital pin. And that's just a way that Arduino uses, knows that you're using pulse width modulation. And we're going to use pin 12 for, the, for displaying the dimming and brightening of an LED. The command you use in Arduino to change the range is map, and you give it the variable that you're, that you're reading or that you want to change, which in this case is the potentiometer, and then you give the range that it is, and it's 0 to 1024. And then you give it the range you want to change it to, which is 0 to 100. Now you really shouldn't use this map function if you want a lot of accuracy. It does some rounding, and from what I've read, it's just not the most accurate. But when you're just dimming an LED, it should be fine. Now here's where I'm going to use the serial port, because I'm going to serial write the variables or the values that we're using in this map function. The nice thing about Arduino is if it's a long command, you can break it up over multiple lines as long as you wait to use a semicolon at the end. We have to convert that potentiometer value to a string. We also have to convert the map value to a string, but in this case we can just cut and paste. So we're going to print in a string value the collected value and then put the value of the potentiometer, and then we're going to print light level and put the value that we're converting that potentiometer to in this map statement. Hopefully that will show you how it all works. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to flash an LED based upon the value of the potentiometer. Not the converted map value, but the value that we just read off the potentiometer. And this is where that current mill up here comes into effect. We're going to use this milliseconds function to get the number of milliseconds since the program was started and compare it to something. And then we'll make the light um, turn on and off based upon that value. I'll put a link here to a video where I go into a little more detail on this. Even though you have a digital pin set to be an output, you can still read it and 
and then you can flip it to be the other direction by using the exclamation point. Now's where the fun begins. I have a bet going with the editor that I can get this without having an error on the first try. So we're going to um, compile this first. Oh! And I have a capitalization. Looks like I owe him a crisp $5 bill. It's going to take a long time to make his head small enough to go through a door now, I'll tell you that. Okay, I'm going to pull up the camera that I have on the two LEDs. One of these will start flashing and the other one will um, dim and brighten. So as I upload the code, we'll see what happens. As you can see, we've got a flash going, and then we have um, have a solid light. It looks like it's flashing in about about a second. That might be set at about mid-range on the potentiometer. I'm just going to turn it up and down. You can see that this light should go dimmer as the light flashes more often. and we're getting the results that we expect. Now I'm going to start the serial monitor and we'll see if the values are also what we would expect. I need to turn off the auto scroll. And so what we're reading off the potentiometer, which if you remember right is a value between 0 and 1024, so we're at the lower end. We're reading about 200, so that means the light's turning on and off at 200 second intervals, or 200 millisecond interview, intervals, or about 400 milliseconds. So about a half a second it's flashing, and the brightness is set at 19. You can think about it as a percentage, so at about 20% of the total value. We're going to increase this to about 800, and it should be about a tenth of that, so it should be around 80 but it goes to 1024, so it might be 81, something like that. I doubt that I can get it right at 800 anyway, So, but it should be close. We'll see. Oh, I've got to set the auto scroll back on. We're about 800. Turn this back off. And at 808, we're getting about 78. If you wanted to get a calculator out and figure out how close that is to accurate, it's probably pretty close. And you can see that this is much brighter and that this is flashing slower. So it's working about the way what we would want. And just to recap, uh, in this video, we went over pulse width modulation, which is really just using an analog write on a digital pin. And then Instead of using this map, you could just assign it to 50, and then you could see the value, and then you could put a delay in here, let's say, and then set it to 100, and then put a delay and set it to 25, and you would see it go up and down. And there's lots of ways to test it for yourself without also including the map function. If you don't have it working with the map function, just put a value in here. At least you would get some results. We also had a light flash. I added this just to show that the uh, potentiometer that we're dealing with real with real numbers, real milliseconds here. In the next video, I'm going to incorporate the Nexion slider to send the values to do pretty much the same thing that the potentiometer is doing. And then in a third video, I'm going to use the Arduino to get the values from the slider on the, from the Nexion display. Because there will be some cases where you want the connection display to control the LED directly. Whenever you slide it, it changes. But there may be another application where you want the Arduino to decide when it changes the value of the LED. And I'm going to do both of these without the connection library on the Arduino. So that way we'll be using the send functions and we'll be using a get function. I don't believe I have a video yet using the get function. So that one should be fun. Well, that's about it for this video. 
If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.